So hello there guys, in this video I'm going to be covering how much should you spend on a new laptop. There are many different opinions out there and many people make you spend more than you should spend and many people make you spend less than you need to spend. So I'm going to try and cover everything you need to know about how much you should spend. There are many options. Some options cost 300 and some options cost 3000. And I know how overwhelming it can be for you to decide how much you need to spend when you buy a new laptop. So, so I'm going to try my best to cover everybody's needs and I'm going to put it all into this video. So whatever you do, you're going to find what you need to know about how much you should spend on a laptop in this video. So how much should you spend on a laptop? You need to spend a, about $100,000 to get a good laptop. No, I'm just joking. So some people say, oh, you need to always go for the i7. Other people say, oh, you need to spend 2000 at least. And none of that is true. The same way your phone can honestly, like it costs 200 and it can do almost anything you would want your computer to do. You don't need to spend a fortune to get a good performing laptop. So I'm going to cover how much you need to spend depending on what you need. I'm going to give you every single budget range that exists and I'm going to try and tell you who should go for each budget range. Before we dive into that, I'm going to try my best to explain and simplify the process of picking a new laptop. So I'm going to tell you why you would want an i3 or i5 or i7, who, you need, who needs more RAM, who needs less RAM and what storage options there are and what you need to look out for when buying a laptop. Whoa, whoa, wait, before I get into that, if you're enjoying this video so far, why don't you just pop that subscribe button and that like button? That shows YouTube that this video is amazing and you will also have an amazing day. So if you want some good luck, make sure to subscribe. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna be talking about the CPUs. So with CPUs, you have two main brands. You've got Intel and AMD. There are some others, but those aren't very popular, so I'll be focusing on these. So for Intel, you've got an i3, an i5, an i7, and an i9. The i3 is an entry-level performance CPU. i5, mid-level performance, high-level performance, and ultra-high-level performance. So what you need to know about these CPUs is an i3 typically has two cores. I'll explain what that means soon. An i5 has four or six cores, an i7 has four, six or eight cores, and then you've got an i9 which has tons of cores, they differ a lot. Okay, so what is a core in a CPU? What do you need to know about that? So a core is like how many brains are in the CPU? So let's say I'm going to throw at you a math equation and it's going to be something very complicated. If you have six different cores or six brains solving the math equation, they can solve it faster because you've got six different people trying to solve one very hard task. However, if I ask you something like 1 plus 1, what is that? You don't need six brains for that. So if you have a two core CPU and you're handling simple tasks like 1 plus 1 equals 2, that is going to be easy for, it's going to be, you don't need too many cores. So you don't always need the highest cores because for simple tasks, you will never need six, eight or more cores because one or two, I mean, two cores is usually more than enough for simple tasks. Okay, so I wish it was that simple, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. So I'm gonna do a quick explanation so you know and don't fall into the trap of buying a bad CPU. So you've got i3, i3, 5, 7, and 9. So usually you, these i3, 5, 7, and 9 are also split up into three tiers. So the i3, usually has different tiers. You've got some entry level options in the i3 and you've got some mid options and you've got some high end options. And to know to know which one is going to be better than the other one, make sure to look at the last three digits on the CPU. The last three digits are usually the model number of the CPU and the higher those digits are usually the better the CPU is going to be. Okay, so then we have generations. So CPUs also have different generations. So the generation is basically almost like saying what year the CPU came out. So the first CPUs that came out were first generation CPUs. The latest CPUs now as in 2020 are 10th generation CPUs. So to know if you are going, if you are getting a first or a 10th generation CPU, look at the first digit after the i7. So you've got i7 dash and you've got a digit. So look at the first digit or first two digit digits if it's a 10. 
So if it's a 987, look at the first digit. If it's a 10, you look at the first two digits and you get a number. So that number tells you what generation the CPU is. So if you go for a very old first generation CPU, you're going to get the worst performance in the world. Because as technology advances, CPUs are getting much faster. So always make sure to stay within at least three generations of what is currently new. So currently, as of 2020, you've got the 10th generations which are the newest thing right now. So try at least go for a 10th generation CPU or a 9th or an 8th or maybe a 7th generation CPU. But don't go for anything below that. Those are going to be all laptops. They're going to be usually much slower and much less efficient and you're going to have much lower battery lives, much slower processing and all of that. So try and stay with the most recent generations of CPUs. Okay, so here's a quick overview. i3s are best for simple tasks. If you want to just do the simple things, you want to be productive, you want to do some Googling, you just want to do some documents, write some documents down, watch some YouTube, watch some Netflix, maybe open some Excel sheets. Those are going to be fine with an i3. You don't need anything more than that. Okay, so let's say you're going for a little bit more complex stuff. You want to try and do some photo editing, maybe some video editing. But you aren't going to be so in, so professional at it and use so many advanced tools. An i5 is going to be fine. And an i5 is, mo is best for most games too. Otherwise, if you are on the more, more extreme side, you might think of going for an i7 or an i9, depending on how advanced you are. For the really advanced people, you would probably know if you need an i9. That's for people who are handling extremely heavy projects and extremely heavy programs and tasks. For most users, an i7 is going to be best for video editing, gaming, it, it will do everything. It will do some 3D, 3D modeling, and you can do animation, you can do anything you can think of, usually with an i7. But that doesn't mean you need to go for an i7 if you aren't going to be using that. So let's say if you are buying a laptop for a kid and you don't want him to waste time using all, all types of things, you just want him to do a studying on it, an i3 is more than enough. If you have an elderly person in the house, and they just want to do some shopping online, they want to Google some things, and i3 is more than enough. And one of the other best ways to figure out what CPU you need is let's say you have a certain program you want to play on this laptop or you want to use on this laptop, make sure to do a quick Google search of what are the recommended requirements for this program. So let's say you want to play uh, a game, let's say you want to play Sims 4. Go Google Sims 4 requirements, system requirements, and you will know exactly what the requirements are so you know which CPU you need to buy and which other things you might need to buy with the laptop. Okay, so second of all, it's going to be RAM. RAM means how much resources your system can use straight on demand. As like, okay, so here's an example. Let's say you are baking a cake. You've got a, a table and you've got some ingredients on this table. If you've got a small table, you can only fit like two ingredients. So whenever you want to add the third ingredient or you want to add more ingredients to your cake you're going to have to go to the cupboard fetch the thing out and put it in it's going to take much longer with ram it's like having a bigger table if you have more ram it's like having a bigger table so you can put more ingredients on your table so you can straight away grab it and plop it in your cake so this is basically what the ram does in your computer so if you are using different programs that would require having lots of things right on demand that that's, you want to go straight ahead and, and you click it and you want it to pop out fast, usually RAM is what does that. And RAM also handles opening different programs at the same time. So let's say you've got multiple Internet Explorer tabs open at the same time and a Google Chrome tab and you've got a program open. So all these programs that you aren't currently using are going to be waiting in the RAM for you to click on them. So when you click on them, they are straight there in the RAM. So they instantly get to the CPU, the CPU processes it and you see it. But if it, if you don't have much RAM, you can't do much multitasking and some programs that require a lot of RAM won't work properly. How much RAM do you need? So you've got different options when it comes to RAM. You've got 4 gigabytes, 8 gigabytes, 16 gigabytes, or you can go for much more. So for the average person, 8 gigabytes is going to be more than enough. Many programs these days are using a lot of RAM. So in the past, 4 gigabytes may have been enough, but today, as of 2020, you want to try and go for 8 gigabytes of RAM at least. So the other thing to know about RAM is if you are going for a Chrome operating system, if you're buying a cheap laptop and you want to buy a Chrome operating system laptop, 4 gigabytes of RAM is usually enough. Chrome operating system does not use as much RAM as the Windows 10 laptops do. 
So if you're going for a Windows 10 laptop, make sure you get 8 gigabytes or more. If you go for a Chrome operating system, usually you can get along with 4. Okay, so what else do you need to know is that if you go for an 8 gigabyte laptop, you don't have to worry too much because most laptops usually have an extra RAM slot. So if you ever find that you need more RAM, you could easily but order a RAM stick online and you just stick it in the laptop and now you've got 16 gigabytes of RAM or more. So try and go for eight gigabytes of RAM and make sure the laptop you're going for is upgradable if you are in doubt. And if you are going for more intense programs, so if you're gonna do video editing, if you're gonna do 3D modeling, if you're gonna do heavy games that require a lot of RAM, make sure to go for 16 gigabytes of RAM or more. So the easiest way to know how much RAM you're gonna need Google the requirements of your program and it will tell you how much RAM you're going to need to run that program efficiently. But for normal use, if you aren't going to be using very heavy programs, 8GB of RAM is more than enough. Okay, so third of all is going to be GPUs. GPUs usually process anything that you see in the laptop. So everything you see that's going on on your screen is usually processed by the GPU. Okay, so what you need to know about GPUs is usually you've got a GPU built into your CPU. So if there is no mentioning of a, graph, a separate graphics card or a dedicated graphics card in the laptop, it means it has a built-in GPU. And sometimes you can also get a laptop with a dedicated GPU. So what that means is the graphics card is separate from the CPU. So you've got a separate processing unit other than the CPU that handles the graphical processing. Okay, so who needs a dedicated GPU and who needs a built-in GPU? Okay, so when do you need to worry about the GPU? Just worry about the GPU if you are going to be doing games or if you're going to be using certain video editing programs that are known to use a lot of GPU, like DaVinci Resolve. If you think about Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects, they rely heavily on the CPU. They don't care about a GPU, so that's fine. And other things like 3D modeling programs, they rely heavily on having a good dedicated GPU. Usually 3D modeling programs are going to be best with a quadro GPU. So. A, G a dedicated GPU is usually best if you're going to be using more, more sophisticated programs and software and games. But for the average user, if you just want to be productive, you want to use some Google Chrome and all these other things, you want to do some homework, you want to do some quizzes online, you do not need a dedicated GPU unless you are using very intensive programs. For the average user, you don't need a GPU. For a gamer, video editor, photo editor, these things, you might need a GPU. For photo editing, usually, a CPU is what is used most, so usually for photo editing, you also don't need a GPU. Okay, so the fourth thing to look out for in a laptop is going to be the laptop size. So to easily know what the size of your current screen is or your or laptop is, you would get a tape measure and you would measure it from one corner of the screen to the other corner of the screen. That is how, that is the how many inches the laptop is. So that's how to know how many inches your laptop is, and then you can get an idea with it. So make sure to get a tape measure get an idea of what size you prefer. Usually smaller sizes are more portable, bigger sizes are usually better for a bigger screen. If you want to do some video editing, you want to do some photo editing, you might want a bigger screen. So that is why you might want to go, go for a bigger option. Okay, so the fifth thing to look out for in your laptop is going to be the screen. So usually you've got three main different types of panels in your laptop. So you've got an IPS panel or a TN panel or a VA panel. So usually IPS panels are going to be the best option to go for. They usually have much higher color accuracy in the screen and they have much better viewing angles. So whatever angle you look at your laptop from, if you look at it from above or you look at it from the side, it will always stay extremely accurate. Unlike the TN panels where if you look at the laptop from above, it might go darker or, or lighter. And if you look at it from under, it will go brighter. That's what happens if you don't go for an IPS panel. However, th they do have advantages. So if you go for a TN panel, you're going to have faster response times, which might be better for gamers. So if you play games, you might want that for faster response times. However, IPS panels are also becoming extremely popular these days. And even gamers are, are using these because they are becoming much faster. And then the other main aspect to look out for is the screen resolution. So you can maybe get along with 720p but it's not the best and you will definitely feel the difference in quality between a 720p laptop and a 1080p laptop. And then you've also got the 1440p laptops and then you've got the 4K laptops. The recommendation I'm gonna give you is gonna be 1080p is gonna be the best middle option for everything. 
If you want to go for a 4K option, be very aware because if you go for a 4K laptop, 4K screens have eight times more pixels in the screen. So you need to have an eight times more powerful GPU to handle processing that screen. So the GPU has to process eight times more pixels. So if you don't get a laptop with a dedicated GPU and you go for a 4K screen, you are doomed. So try and get a dedicated GPU if you want to go for a 4K screen. However, what that will also do is it will lower your battery life. So if so, I'd probably say try and stay with the 1080p until in the future where the 4K laptops have higher battery lives and we have stronger graphical processing units. Okay, so the seventh thing to look out for when buying a laptop is going to be the battery life of the laptop. Be aware, manufacturers might tell you their laptop lasts 11 hours. However, in reality, it lasts 6 hours or something. So, never trust the manufacturers. To know how much battery life a laptop has, do a quick Google search of the name of the laptop and battery life or the model of the laptop with battery life and you will find people who have actually tested the laptop and they will give you accurate battery life representations of the laptop. The company will always give higher or it will give like the absolute maximum battery life that could ever be possible Excellent. on the laptop and that is not realistic. So make sure to do your own research. If you trust the manufacturers, you're going to be up for a big surprise. The eighth thing to look out for in a laptop is going to be storage. So storage size is going to be depending on your needs. So depending on how much storage you're going to need in your laptop, that's how much you need. If you are going to put a ton of videos and you always store your camera videos and photos on your laptop, you're going to want more storage. But don't worry about the storage too much because you could easily buy something like this external hard drive. This can get 4000 gigabytes of storage into it. And all you have to do is you just plug it in the laptop, store things on it, and then you just hide it somewhere. Okay, so then you've got fast storage and you've got slow storage. So you've got SSDs, NVMe 2.0 SSDs, or EMMC flash technology, or you've got HDDs. Stay away from HDDs. HDDs are very slow. The other three are pretty fast. So if you try and go for an SSD or an NVMe 2.0 SSD, these are much faster than the HDDs. Okay, so why does it matter that you go for fast storage? I mean, it's only storage, isn't it? So no, the what storage does is if you have fast storage, anything you use on the computer is going to open up much faster. So you open up a game, it loads much faster. You open up Internet Explorer, it opens much faster. You turn on the computer, it boots much faster. You don't want to wait two minutes for the computer to turn on. With an SSD, you would easily get a quick boot, something like... 20 30 seconds and your laptop will be open probably even lower than that and why does this happen it's because your cpu has to wait to get information from your computer so it can process it so if you have a very slow storage or a very slow hard drive like an hdd your cpu is just sat there waiting for your hard drive to give it the information it needs so it will process something and then it'll have to wait and then it'll process something and then it'll have to wait with a fast hard drive Everything gets sent out quickly and everything loads quickly. The ninth thing to look out for is going to be a keyboard. If you are very into having a good keyboard and you want to type a lot and you want to type essays, you want to do homework, you want to type some documents, maybe you have a blog and you want to blog, you need a good keyboard. If you get a bad keyboard, you're going to curse this keyboard every day until you buy a new laptop. So don't fall into the mistake of looking at everything else and forgetting the keyboard if you're going to be using the keyboard a ton. Make sure to get a keyboard that feels nice and to know how the keyboard is going to feel before you buy it, do a quick Google search of the name of the laptop with keyboard and you will find people that reviewed this laptop and they will tell you how the keyboard feels, if it has mushy keys or if they are clicky and responsive. So for me that is a very big thing when buying a laptop. The 10th thing to look out for in a laptop is going to be the build quality and the weight of the laptop, however personally I don't really care about those too much. Okay, so now I'm going to be explaining each different budget range and what consumers they intended for. So first of all, we've got the $150 to $300 range. In this range, you're usually going to get about 4GB of RAM. You're usually going to get 32GB to 64GB of storage. So that is how much space you actually have on the laptop to store your files on. 
So if that number is worrying you, don't worry because you could usually easily buy something like an external hard drive or a hard disk. And this thing has got four terabytes of storage, which is 4,000 gigabytes of storage. So you could easily buy one of these and you don't have to buy one so big, but they are cheap and you could easily get an extra 500 or 1,000 gigabytes or whatever you need. So if you want us to be storing videos and different files, this is a good option. Then the other thing you could do is you could also use online storage options like Google Drive or uh, there are other things like Dropbox that you can use. Some of them are free and then you, if you want to extend your space more, you need to pay a little bit extra to get more storage. However, I would recommend to stick to hard storage rather than paying a monthly subscription to get more storage because that is not very cost effective. Okay, so who is this laptop going to work best for? So this laptop is usually going to work best for kids that are in school. It's going to work best for elderly people who don't yet really know how to use the laptop and they just want to use a laptop for emails or for online shopping or maybe they want to just watch some YouTube and just browse the web and Google some things. This is going to be a great option for that and it's also great for school kids because it's not very expensive if they break it it doesn't really matter too much rather than them breaking a one thousand dollar laptop and you could basically do everything productive on this laptop you could easily do documents for school work you could easily uh, now the only problem is that you're going to have a chrome operating system in this budget range it is harder to find windows based laptops because windows based laptops usually cost more because the producers who make the laptops would usually have to pay for a license from Windows to get a licensed laptop for Windows 10. However, the Chrome operating system is free, so they don't have to pay extra for that and they could easily make a cheap laptop and they don't have to pay extra for the operating system. So what is a Chrome operating system? It is Google's operating system and it is basically the same thing that you would have on most phones. So most phones or Google Chrome based pho phones they would usually have a Chrome operating system. And so basically with a Chrome operating system, you can't install things that you would for a Windows system, but you can download and install anything you want from the Play Store. So you can get any apps that you need from the Play Store and you could also get simple games from the Play Store. Okay, so, so this option is gonna be best for kids, elderly people, or anybody that just wants to stick to the productive stuff and you don't want something too fast, you just want something that works, something that you can type on, you can do your schoolwork on, this is a great option for that. So the another downside with this thing is it, they don't usually have the highest build quality. So if you're looking for the a very high build quality laptop, this won't be the way to go. But this is great, as I said, if you want to do simple browsing day to day uh, simple browsing watching videos playing simple games it will handle those with no problem anything more than that you're gonna have to go for the next options video editing out of the question you cannot do that on this laptop photo editing anything advanced you won't be able to do in this price range okay so the next budget range is gonna be 300 to 500 dollars in this budget range you can expect 8 gigabytes of ram which means that you could work more tasks at the same time you could open more tabs of google chrome at the same time you could open different applications at the same time you can open a game and have google open and have your document open and it will handle that with no problem but some laptops will also have 4 gigabytes of ram so try your best to go for an 8 gigabyte of ram option that is going to give you a little bit extra room to work with so what else can you expect with this budget range? You'd usually get faster CPUs and you would also get faster storage. So in this budget range, you can expect to get an SSD hard drive. An SSD hard drive is gonna be faster than the eMMC flash hard drive that you'd usually get with the lower budget range. SSDs are, are much faster and they're gonna make your PC boot up faster. Any programs are gonna overall feel much more snappy and fast and more responsive. So the good thing, the other good thing with this budget range is you can do higher than basic tasks. So if you want to play some simple games or you want to use some simple programs, maybe you want to add some clips together and make a cool video, this will do that with no problem. But if you want to do video editing and you want to go into adding visual effects and things like that, that won't really work 
but it will do the basics like chopping clips, putting them together, adding some music, it will do that fine with no problem. So another advantage with this budget range is you, you usually get a better looking laptop and an overall better build quality, you'll get a faster CPU and an extra RAM and you'd also get some extra storage. So if you're lucky you'd be able to find 128GB of storage or even more if you go for an HDD. But I would recommend to stay away from hard disk drives, stay away from HDD storage that is very slow and it's very outdated and it is prone to break and you're prone to have problems if you drop the laptop it might break and you, it is not as good as the more, more modern ssd storage options try go for an ssd or an emmc flash technology or try go for an nvme ssd these are all much faster than the hdds Usually in this budget range, you won't find any dedicated graphics cards. That's why it's not going to be best for any graphic intensive programs, but it will definitely do the basics. And you may even be able to play some basic games, some older games, but you won't be able to play more recent games. So this option is going to be best suited for the school kids. And you could also maybe use it for university if you're, a, if you're a university student and you just want to do the basics, you want to do your homework, you want to open your website, your university website, you want to manage to make some documents, send some homework, receive some homework, do some online quizzes. This is great for that and it won't fail you. It is a safer option to go for than the 150 to $300 range. Usually you'd also get added battery life, which is going to be a very helpful thing if you want to take this thing to a coffee shop and you want to work on something all night this is a great option for that it's great for studying great for all the basics and it will give you a more comfortable speed and responsiveness than the 150 to 300 dollar range what you can't do with this budget range is you cannot expect to do video editing you cannot expect to play advanced video games and you cannot expect to do creative work as Photoshop and things like that. You could definitely work on very small and simple projects, but for more complex projects, you're probably going to have to go for the next budget range. So another thing you may want to try and be careful for in this budget range is just try and stay away from Windows in S mode if you are going to be using things that Microsoft won't provide you with. So Windows in S mode means that you cannot download any software or program unless it's from the Microsoft uh, App Store. So unless you unless all your favorite things are in there, I would suggest you try and stay away from Windows S mode. That way you unlock the full potential of the laptop and you can download any programs that you want rather than being restricted. However, if you are going to be using this for basic stuff for Word, Office, PowerPoint, these things, uh, Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, these are all going to work perfectly well in Windows 10 and S mode. So if you're going to be going for that, that is a great option. But if you want to do more things, try and stay away from S mode. You may also run across some Google Chrome OS laptops. This is a personal preference for you. This is gonna, usually a Chrome OS laptop is going to have higher performance because as I said before, they don't have to pay for the licensing of the Chrome operating system. It's free. So they can afford to put more specs into the laptop. So you'd usually get a better performing laptop, but you would have the issue that you could only download apps from the Google Play Store or the Google App Store. Okay, so the $500 to $800 range laptops. This is where things get more exciting. So in this laptop, you can expect to do video editing. You can expect to play some video games. And you can also expect to do really anything you want to do with a laptop. You won't be able to do very advanced and big projects with let's say video editing, but you will definitely be able to get by and do some basic stuff. You could easily cut clips together, add music, add some transitions, that would work out fine. But if you want to add multiple layers, you want to track some objects, you want to do some color grading, you probably want to try and go for more than this because this is going to be very laggy but it will work it will still try it will attempt to do your things that you want to do and if you have patience it will work fine but if you want something that's going to work seamlessly and you are going to try to color grading and add effects visual effects and add multiple layers multiple sound layers you are going to try and go for a higher budget option for this budget range you could also play games you could play 
You could play many of the modern games but at very low settings and if you want to play the modern multiplayer games like Dota, Fortnite, League of Legends, things like this, it would be able to handle with no problem. But keep in mind, uh, a normal laptop is going to be different from a gaming laptop so if you want to do gaming it's preferable that you go for a gaming laptop. For the normal slim laptops, they're going to be able to do most things you want them to do. They will easily be able to edit some videos. You'd be able to do most things you want to do on a laptop. Okay, so there are so many things you can do in this budget range on a laptop. So I'm going to tell you what you can't do on this laptop. You can't play AAA games. You can't do very complex software. You can't do, you can't handle big 3D modeling programs. You may be able to make th small 3D models like a cube, some, some basic things, but you won't be able to do very complex things like a, a very big house or a building with the interiors and things like that. That's going to be more complex and you will need more specs to do that. For the basics, this is going to be a great all around option. It's going to be great in a battery life wise, speed wise, and it's going to have more RAM than the other laptop so you can have more things open at the same time and usually they are more efficient they have faster cpus and overall they're going to give you a faster overall performance usually you're going to have much more storage so you won't need to buy an external hard drive you'd usually expect to get 500 gigabytes to one terabyte of storage in this price range ram is usually 8 gigabytes and you could also find 16 gigabytes if you're lucky and you usually get an i5 CPU which is going to be great because you're going to have more cores so you're going to have faster processing and more processing power. So another advantage of this price range is going to be that you, you could also take advantage of higher resolution screens, you get higher battery life and you could also get better looking laptops that suit your style. And another option is going to be they will, you could easily find more lightweight options. So these are reasons you might want to go for this range because usually the uh, to make very thin laptops, it takes more money to get them to work, to run fast and thin at the same time. So if that's one of your priorities and you want a very lightweight laptop, this might be a reason you want to consider this price range. And yeah, build quality is going to be higher than the previous price ranges. But it also depends on what you're going to use it for. So if you're going to be using this thing for basic tasks, I would recommend try and find a better laptop from the previous price range. This price range is going to be better for handling more complex tasks. You don't need to go spend this money if you're just going to be using Google, YouTube, simple things, checking your emails, writing documents. The previous budget range is going to be more than enough unless you want to take advantage of a touch screen, a 360 rotatable laptop, and things like that. This price range, the $800 to $1,200 price range is going to be best for more than 90% of people out there. This is going to be very fast, it's going to be very responsive and you could easily run multiple programs at the same time. You could do video editing, you could do photo editing, you could do 3D programs, you could do anything with this laptop, but you won't be able to do very complex projects. So the only time you would you would try and go higher than this budget range is if you are going to be doing very complex video editing, you're going to be doing very complex photo editing with tons of layers, tons of different effects and tons of maybe different tabs open at the same time, uh, then you might want to go for a higher range option. If you want very good 4K performance, you want to go for a higher budget range, this budget range won't be enough. If you go for a 4K option, yeah, you're cool, you have a 4K screen. The only problem with that is that a 4K screen requires about 8 times more processing to get the same... Uh, it requires 8 times more than a 1080p screen of graphical processing. So you'd usually want to have a good dedicated graphics card Otherwise, you aren't going to have good performance. And if you have a bad graphics card, you're going to have some bad 4K performance. Like you, you probably have many problems. I would recommend against that. Wait, try and either go for a higher budget range if you want a 4K screen or just stick to a 1080p screen. So the only reason you want to go higher than this is if you do very advanced video editing, if you do very advanced 3D modeling, and if you do very advanced other things. Another reason you might want to go for a higher range is if you are going for a workstation laptop. Workstation laptops are usually more expensive than the average 
laptop, a gaming laptop or a normal thin laptop. So workstation laptops are usually more expensive and if you want the same performance you're going to usually have to go a little bit higher. So for most 3D modeling guys studying architectural, uh, uh, architectural things or engineering or uh, any type of 3D modeling program you're going to try and go for a higher budget range from this and this and go for a workstation laptop that is going to work best for most people because you want a quadro graphics card or an AMD Fire Pro graphics card, those are usually not cheap. They are more expensive because they are less commonly made. This is going to be great for business use. You could use multiple programs at the same time without the fear of losing any work. The battery life is usually, usually outstanding. On this price range, you can easily find a laptop with 11 hours of battery life. So battery life in this budget range is going to be great. The other thing that will be amazing is the looks and the professional looks. So if you want something that looks professional and you're going to be working in a corporation where you want to actually look like you, you want to have a high quality laptop, this is the way to go. In this price range, you could easily find professional high grade looking laptops. Another reason you want to go for this price range is you want a touch screen. You want to do some art three if you want to do some art and you want to touch the screen this is going to be a great budget range okay so above one thousand two hundred dollars you are usually going to know that you're going to need that anybody who's doing very complex video editing anybody who's doing complex 3d modeling anybody who's doing complex 3d animation or any very complex projects you're going to have to go for above $1,200 and another reason you might want to go for above $1,200 is for if you want to go if you want to do some gaming but you want to get your games to run at 144 frames per second and you want to play some modern games you might want to go for above $1,200 to get that and to get a good 144 hertz screen and to get 144 frames per second so most people should stay away from this budget range you don't really need this budget range unless you are very advanced in what you do and you know that you need something better you want to edit 4k footage you want to do very complex editing and ed editing things projects you want to do very complex 3d models and you want to do more for the advanced users in each different profession but for most people, if you want to do business work, you just want to do some emails, you want to do some Googling, you want to do some YouTube, don't go higher than this. Unless, of course, as I said before, you want a 4K laptop that also has good performance. A 4K laptop is going to need a stronger graphics card and stronger processing, so that might be a reason you want to consider this price range. Another reason is if you want a really high color accuracy laptop, because maybe you want to do color sensitive projects like photoshopping things for clients or like color grading footage you would want a very accurate screen color uh, and usually you might want to pay a little bit more for a studio or art like the asus pro art laptop or like you want a laptop that has very high color accuracy that might be a reason why you want to go for this budget so if you know anybody that is going to buy a laptop, make sure to share this video with them to hopefully help them not spend any money they don't need to spend. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe below. And I wish you a very nice day. If you have any questions, comment them below and I'm going to try my best to answer them. So don't hesitate, comment any questions you have below. I'll try my best to answer you as soon as possible. So I wish you a very nice day. Goodbye.